Okay, you guys, so this is super exciting. Uh, Cindy from the Tireless Tangler has started doing uh, Celtic knot tutorials. I love Celtic knots. Like, you have no idea, but I'm horrible at them. Um, and I've never been able to figure out how they go correctly. Um, and, I mean, ask me to figure out the refraction in a gem, and I will sit there for three hours, but ask me to do under, over, together, twisted, and I just can't do it. But she's made it so simple and so wonderful, and so this tutorial we are doing together, and I am doing the gem for this, uh, not after I have gone through her tutorial to do the setting and it came out great. You've got to go watch it. The link is in the description and here we go. All right, so here's our knot all finished. Our beautiful Celtic knot. I'm just, I am floored. Like I really, really am. She makes these so easy and I just I never realized before because I'm not that bright or something anyway let's go on to the gem I picked out a beautiful like deep green that I wanted to do for this um, and it's gonna be like a star gem to kind of match her star Celtic knot thingy going on here so we have cream, light green, permanent green, and chrome oxide green. So we have just four colors, which is super simple. And then we're going to do a little bit of fancy in the middle to make it look really pretty. And uh, also because I pushed way too hard with my compass and kind of dented my tile. So, you know, going to try and hide it. All right, so we're going to start with a little bit of cream and just go in the middle because that's really where we want it. We want that nice bright middle and basically putting down the lightest color first and then building on top of that will help us keep a nice light middle. I'm going to take the light green and do the same. We're just going to go over the cream. We're not going to try and like isolate it or anything like that. I'm not going all the way to the edge because I want to keep the edge nice and dark. And I'm just putting on a very, very whisper light layer because we're going to come back and layer them all and push a little bit harder and get it all nice and blended later on. And then we're going to go on to our permanent green and go pretty much all the way out, almost. This is going to kind of be our in-between color for the greens. It's really going to set a tone when we get these start really blending them in. So we're just going all the way around. This is going to be one of those lights coming from all around it gems. Normally I do direct light gems where there's direct light and it comes in and it hits the bottom and comes back out. This one I want to just glow out from the middle. So that's what we're doing. Okay, I'm going to go down to the chrome oxide green. As you can see, this is super easy. This one, I want to really get nice and dark. I'm, I'm still not pushing very hard, but I'm getting it nice and dark right here near these edges. So, you, as you know, we want our edges to sort of recede away from us. Just like that. Nice and dark by the edge. And 
and then just kind of do little circular motions out here so we can kind of get it nice and blended in as we go. I can't get over how simple that tutorial was. Like, oh my goodness, guys. I'm doing another one, like, right after this. Like, seriously. She has a different one that she did. Uh, it's got, like, three of these thingies and, like, a heart. And I want to do that one, too. So, that's the one I'm doing next. Got this edge pretty much done. We'll bring this dark green out a little bit farther because we can use the light green to blend as well as the permanent green. We'll just go over each other and blend them all together. And the point of layering is the more layers you get in here, not only are you using up more of the tooth of the paper, but you're also getting more vibrancy, more saturation. So this is the permanent green. As you can see, I'm just going around and circular motions for blending. Blending it down in here. Sometimes I realize that it does not look circular, but it is, I promise. Maybe it's more ovular. It's ovular, guys. Ovular motions. We've made it all the way around. Congratulations to us. Let's go on to our light green, which is so gorgeous. And again, this can go everywhere because we want it all to blend nice and smoothly together. Nice. The more you do with the pencil, the better it looks. The more layers. Sometimes you just need to be patient with it. Sometimes I'm not a patient person. But it does look really pretty. Um, I'm going to go back up to the permanent green. and the chrome oxide. Make sure our edges are nice and dark still. A little bit more filled in.
the contrast between the darks and lights and gems is what makes it. It's not always the colors, really. It's really the contrast. Lights and darks. How light is it going? How dark is it going? And the more contrast you have, the brighter your gems seem to pop. which is what I love the most, is how they seem to just be so three-dimensional. Which is why I try and get edges really nice and dark, and then you've got the bright white highlight that we do at the end, and it just brings everything together. Just like that. Ah, that really looks nice. Okay, so what we're going to do here, just a little bit right here that I want to get. Okay. Okay, stop being picky. All right, so I've got a decently sharp ish point on some parts of this, but you want to get your pencil nice and sharp, and then we're going to go in. We're just going to do like little. starbursts out from here, right from the middle. And then on each of the sides of these, I'm just kind of giving it like almost a, like a little diamond shape. I don't know if you can really see that. I hope so. Can you see that? Yeah. Like the little diamond shapes at the ends. Which I think just is kind of cool. It's like, uh, I don't know. What would you call that? I don't know. I've seen lots of like little patterns inside gems and stuff like that. So I thought it'd be cool if we put one in here. Just like that, so that it has a bit of like, just interest in the middle, you know? Just putting some extra color right there, right in the middle, where I have that little divot that I didn't really mean to do. There we go. All right, let's grab our trusty jelly roll over here. I asked my Uniball signal gel pen if he was going to work today. He said no. I mean, very emphatic. So, getting out the jelly rolls. Now, these are slightly curved, so we're going to stay on that curve with our highlight right there. And bring it as a tapered nice little point then we're going to do the same on the exact opposite side and then I think like a little Runaway highlights over here. Maybe some dots. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it looks good. That looks pretty good. What do you think? I think that looks pretty good. I don't want to, like, overdo them, but I think that looks good right there. Alright, except for, except for that one. See that one? It's, like, coming apart. We'll just correct him a little bit. 
And there we have it. Check out that gem. Gorgeous. Um, so I think what I want to do for the rest of it is turn this into gold. Um, turn the entire ribbon into gold. Gold is super simple. It's it's cream. Um, one of like the yellow ochres, and then maybe like one or two browns. Check out my gold tutorial. I will link it in the description for you. And uh, maybe do a little bit of shading around the outside, I'm thinking, maybe. But either way, this is going to turn out gorgeous. And so if you want to hang in and watch, cool. If not, hop on, do your own. Uh, make sure you go over to Cindy's and learn how to do this star setting. It's gorgeous. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.